There were at least three groups of people there that day, just as there are almost always three groups of people in every gathering. There was the crowd of sympathy. The crowd of sympathy is the first crowd of people that were there that day. These are those people who stood by with tears in their eyes. They were sobbing and saying, why is this happening? What did he do to them? What wrong has he done? This is always the way with the sympathetic crowd. They stand by and cry. But that's all they did. They didn't try to defend him. They didn't cry out to Pilate to release him and not Barabbas. They just stood there and cried. This crowd is also around today in many churches up and down Britain, attending church but not speaking up for Jesus. They stand by and watch as other people do God's work. They sometimes cry and say how terrible things are, but they never lift a finger to help. They just stand by and cry. Then there's the crowd of antipathy. Those people opposed to Jesus Christ and his ministry. And the crowd who shouted to Pilate, crucify him, crucify him. This crowd wanted to see Jesus die. He was a threat to them. His teachings were directly opposed to the lifestyles they want to pursue. And this crowd is also with us today. This is the crowd that wants to banish Christian teaching from our schools and keep the good news about Jesus from the radio or the television. They, they hate Christianity and its teachings so much that they want to eradicate it from the face of the earth. Crowd of antipathy. And then there is a crowd of apathy. This is the worst of the three crowds. They're just unconcerned about Jesus. They just don't care. No matter what is going on, they don't care in the least bit. Their motto is, whatever. This crowd was there just to see what was happening. They didn't care who was dying. They just came along for the ride to see someone die. And we have this crowd with us today also. They know that a church stands in their town, but they never think of going. They think, well, if they think about it at all, they would think, well, that's nice for them. But they never come to church themselves. They've never read a Bible. They're totally unconcerned. They just don't care. The crowd of sympathy, the crowd of antipathy, the crowd of apathy. They were all at the foot of the cross that day. Are you in one of these three crowds today? Not only do we see three crowds, but we can also see three crosses on Golgotha. Jesus was not crucified alone. He was in the middle of two thieves. There was the cross of rejection. This cross held the thief that cried out to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. He didn't really believe that Jesus was the Messiah. His words of rejection were, If you are, showing his doubt in the one being crucified next to him. And there are many today who, along with this thief, would rather reject Jesus the Christ than to accept him and have everlasting life. The cross of rejection. Are you rejecting Christ this day? Good Friday is a good time to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then there is the cross of reception. This was the thief who said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied today, 
you shall be with me in paradise. Many here today, praise God, belong to this cross of reception, but all need to receive Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Because the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. We all need to get with the programme and live distinctively as Jesus' people today. God has promised eternal life to all who turn to him. Turn to Jesus Christ as your saviour today. And the third cross is the centre cross. This is the cross of love. It was not the nails that held his hands to the cross. It was love. Love kept Jesus on that cross the day they crucified him. His love for you and for me, that is so great that no amount of suffering could have stopped him from taking his place, your place, and my place on the cross. The story is told of a group of schoolboys many years ago that had a new teacher in their school, a fine young Christian man. On his first day at school, he told the class that to be a good school, there had to be rules to follow. The teacher asked for suggestions from, for some school rules from the boys. Well, the boys shouted out, no stealing, no swearing, no lying, no cheating and so on. If we have rules, said the teacher, there must be a penalty for those who break them. One of the students shouted, ten strokes of the cane across the backside, and all the boys agreed. Well, they were boys. So they had set their rules and their consequences. It was only a week later when the bully of the class, Big Frank, found that his lunch was missing. Someone had stolen it. After some questioning, a skinny little boy named Timmy confessed that he had taken Big Frank's lunch. He said that he hadn't eaten for three days and was desperate for food. The boy's mother was a widow and was doing her best to provide for her four children, but often there was little to eat. The teacher, knowing that the rules had to be followed, called Timmy to the front of the class, told him that he was involved in the making of the rules. And the penalty for those who broke the rules, he was involved in that also. You must bend over the end of the desk, the teacher said. Little Timmy cried. Please, sir, don't cane me. Timmy, you helped make up the rules and their punishment, and now you must take the consequences, the teacher said. Then Big Frank spoke up and said, Teacher, can someone take the place of another for the punishment? Yes, replied the teacher. In fact, it's a biblical substitute, one for another. And with that, Big Frank came up to the teacher's desk. I'll take his caning, he said. At the seventh stroke of the cane, the cane broke. By now, the whole class of boys were in tears. And through tears of his own, the teacher looked down at Big Frank and at Timmy, the little boy. Timmy had put his arms around Big Frank's neck and was telling him, Frank, thank you for taking my caning for me. I will remember this for the rest of my life. Today we remember that Jesus took our punishment for us on the cross. We are the ones who should pay the price for our own wrongdoing. But Jesus Christ stood in our place. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour? Are you born again in him? Can you look forward to eternity in heaven 
because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. Let's bow our heads to pray. And if you wish to, you can repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, I turn away from anything that might be a barrier between you and me. I turn to you this day. I believe that you died on the cross and rose from the dead to save me. I accept you as my saviour. Help me to learn and to grow as I follow you. Amen.